the loss of the Hellcat, that is a giant blow. That said, I wouldn't count Dodge out. Yes. The new Charger EV, you can remove the batteries and a V8 with a rear wheel drive transmission bolts into the frame. What's up guys, it's your boy Knockout360 here with another video, man. So as you can tell, I'm in a house that makes it a house vlog. You know what's going down when I come around. I am still hellcat list. So uh, until I get my baby back, you know, we're gonna be in the house chilling. I got some other content coming your way too, but I did wanna bring this to you. So this is via Motor Trend, motortrend.com. Motortrend.com is a reputable website. It's not like a mom and pop joint. It's a legitimate website. This was from their documentary video, V8, The Engine of America, a Motor Trend special documentary. So they filmed the documentary where they were basically talking about the V8 and kind of how it's the engine of America, how it began in the hot rod days all the way up to what we have now in our cars and how in a lot of companies that V8 is on its way out to be replaced by hybrids and electrics. But there was one specific part where they talked about the Dodge, uh, the Dodge um, 2025, the future. Right. And I want you guys to uh, I want to put you guys up on this and tell me what you feel about it. amounts of power while keeping the V8 reliable and clean. The Hemi, the loss of the Hellcat, that is a giant blow. That said, I wouldn't count Dodge out. Yes. The new Charger EV, you can remove the batteries and a V8 with a rear wheel drive transmission bolts into the frame. By design. And now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, the Hemi known to devotees as simply the elephant. The earth. All right, so long story short, and uh, I think they start to go into the Hemi engine, kind of the uh, the history of it or whatever, but you heard it there. This is coming from MotorTrend.com. MotorTrend.com, like I said, is not a small mom and pop shop type of uh, website. It's a pretty reputable website, a website that I've used for quite some time. You heard what the man said. He said it's literally built in such a way that you can remove the batteries. And we're talking about the 2025 EV joint, right? We're not talking about the inline six or the six pack or anything like that. Because I think the inline six, that body is built in such a way it's specifically built for the, um, the inline six. But for the EV, the 2025 Dodge Charger EV, apparently it's built in such a way that, I mean, it's hot swappable, right? If you're familiar with computer terms. You can swap that damn battery out, however many batteries they put in it, and I think it's dual battery. Take them damn batteries out and then drop a Hemi into it. Now, he didn't specify what type of Hemi it is. He didn't specify whether we're talking 5.7, whether we're talking 6.4, or whether we're talking 6.2 supercharged. You know what I mean? I would imagine if it's going to be a 6.2 supercharged, you would have to change more than just the batteries out. You probably have to uh, create some room for the hood because, of course, it's got that big supercharger sitting on top and you know, kind of get in there and do some fabrication with the hood or whatever. But he did say in plain words that it was built in such a way that you can take the batteries out and drop a Hemi in it. He just didn't specify what type of Hemi. But I would imagine if we're talking the Dodge Charger EV, which is supposed to be the most powerful Dodge Charger that they've ever produced, it's gotta be a Hellcat that, that, that you can swap in there. Now, if you know anything about Dodge, and we all know this, Swapping Hellcat to Scat Pack engines is pretty easy. I've seen Hellcat engines in old SRT8 bodies. I've seen Hellcat engines in 300 bodies. I've seen Hellcat. Uh, most recently, I saw a Hellcat in a, uh, a uh, um, what was it? Not a CRV. Not a CRV. It was a Nissan something where they uh, dropped the Hellcat engine into a Nissan body. It was one of them fast cars or whatever that the Nissans uh, drive. Hold on. Yeah, Hellcat Swap 350Z. They dropped a Hellcat engine and a Nissan 350Z. Now, to my understanding, that Nissan 350C is damn near as heavy as the Hellcat engine itself. But somehow or another, they were able to fabricate that car to where they were able to drop a 707 horsepower Hellcat engine into it. So that tells me that that engine is pretty customizable, right? And then you can drop it into a lot of frames and a lot of bodies. And apparently that's what this 2025 EV is going to offer right? The ability to drop a Hellcat engine into it. Now, with that being said, let's be realistic here. This is not realistic for your average consumer at all. It's not affordable because not only do you have to now go out and buy a 60, 70, $80,000 electrified all wheel drive 2025 Dodge Charger, but now you have to find legally, like let's, let's be honest here and let's keep it, you know, above the table, not below the table. Let's keep it above the table. Legally, you go out and buy a Hellcat engine. Hellcat engines are not cheap at all. 
You know what I mean? Like I remember back in the day, um, I remember back in the day uh, doing videos on the Hellcat crates and some of those engines, I think the Hellcat specifically starting was like 20,000 and up. And then you get into the red eye and then the demon and then the demon 170 well into the 30,000s. So you're talking about buying a 60, 70, $80,000 car and then swapping that out with a $20,000 Hellcat engine. Now, for me to do that, being a, a creator and a content creator and a Dodge enthusiast, that's one thing, right? That's content on content on content. But for the average consumer, that's not realistic. Not to mention, you just don't know how the electronics and stuff like that is going to mesh with that 2025 charger. You know what I'm saying? You know, they want you to put in over 30K worth of engine upgrades and modifications, not to mention just the electronics aspect of it. Like, I'm, I don't know how... I don't know what the SRT pages is going to look like. I just don't know. I'm not a mechanic. You guys know that I'm not a mechanic. I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to expect somebody to buy a $80,000 uh, automobile. And I'm being on the low end. I don't know how much those SRT banshees are going to go for. But an $80,000 car and then turn around and legally buy another $20,000 engine just for the sake of, you know, just for the sake of having an old V8 engine in your charger. Now, like I said, if you're a content creator, for the big content creators, the whistling diesels and your, uh, not Doug DeMiro, what's the other tall dude's name? Uh, I forgot. But, you know, for those guys and stuff like that, that does stuff like that, um, you know, that, that makes sense. But for the average consumer, no. Unless you just want to be that guy that's at the Dodge car meet with the 2025 Dodge with a Hellcat engine, which is fine. Now, of course, if you go the illegal route, I'm sure you could probably just find a Hellcat engine on the side of the street, but you didn't hear that from me. But um, that seems to be an option that Dodge is offering, which makes no damn sense whatsoever, personally. Um, just come out with the just come out with the damn V8, you know? Instead of doing all the hot swapping and stuff like that, and potentially, well, you will void the, uh, you'll void every damn thing on that car, straight up and down. All warranty, anything that you can imagine on that car will be voided. But um, just come out with the V8 option. You know what I'm saying? Like all this other shenanigans makes no sense. I've heard speculation of them coming out with the V8 option, the inline six, uh, a V8, and then an electric. I've heard speculation like this one right here where you can hot swap it. I mean, we've seen pictures when the first 2025s were rolling off the lot. We saw a bunch of pictures of the frame that suggest, and let's see here. I mean, I remember when these pictures were first coming out. When these pictures were first coming out, everybody and their mama was talking about, oh, it looks like it can accept the transmission. Oh, here it is. Here's the one. It would be the smallest picture known to man. All right, so that's better. So yeah, this little area right here looks like a lot of people have been saying that that looks like maybe somewhere that you could drop a real wheel drive transmission. Um, you know, or this one right here, this is the better one. Yeah, this particular area looks like somewhere you could drop a real wheel drive transmission, you know, all that stuff, uh, have your diff brake, have your diff differential and all that stuff back there. You know, and of course, you know, this looks like plenty of room right here in this front area, in the hood area, where it could house a V8 engine. And I remember a lot of people on the blogs were saying that, that, oh, it looks like it can take a V8 engine. I mean, if you just got stupid money like that, by all means, do what you do. You know, do what you do. So here is the, the platform. So this is what the EV is going to look like. I'm assuming these are the batteries and all this shit down here. Uh, here is the... Uh, yeah, here is the, uh, you know, uh, axles and all that shit, rear wheel, front wheel, all that stuff. So I'm assuming that they're saying that somehow or another, all of this can be removed and you can drop a rear wheel drive transmission in there along with a big Hemi engine. If that is possible, that is possible, but it's not economical and it's not feasible. And it's not going to be a selling point of these cars. Nobody in their right mind is going to go out and buy a 80, 90, $100,000 electric charger on a Monday, and then the first thing they do is yank all that shit out Tuesday morning and drop a Hellcat engine into it. Nobody's doing that. If you're one of those, you know, V8 purists and you just want everything in your life to be V8, you may, you know what I'm saying? And you got fuck you money like that. You may do something like that, but realistically speaking, nobody's doing that. I don't trust these new brand, the, the 2024, 2025 charges at all. You know, I'm going to give you my honest opinion, man. And I was talking to my guy, um, I don't even want to say his name, 
or the dealership. I don't want to, you know, put them out. But uh, long story short, they were just like, we're not ordering 2024 Chargers at all. There are some dealerships that are not ordering unless they're forced or required to. They're not ordering 2024 Chargers just because they already know what's going to happen. You're going to have a whole lot of issues with these cars, right? Rightfully so, because Dodge is stepping into uncharted territory. You know what I mean? They're in the electric game, something they've never done before. And all of a sudden, they want to do it with the most powerful car that they've ever built. You already know there's going to be issues from A to B, from top to bottom, you know, from 12 to 6. Nothing but issues. So a lot of these dealerships don't even want to deal with the headaches because they're going to become legitimate parking lots with all of these 2024 Chargers sitting there waiting to be worked on. You know, because to my understanding, the inline six, um, uh, the inline six hurricane engines that came on the Jeep Wagoneers, they were having a whole bunch of issues, right? A whole bunch of recalls on the first generation. So you already know the 2024 and probably 2025 Dodge Charger will have a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of recalls. You're going to be spending just as much time in the shop as you are at home or on the strip having fun. You're going to be spending a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy, probably not money because it should all be under warranty, but a whole lot of time in the damn shop, you know, and a lot of dealerships don't want to deal with that. Henceforth, the reason they're not ordering the 24s or the 25s until they've been tried and true and proven. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, nobody's nobody's doing that a lot of dealerships are not willing to take that risk so either way guys i you know me personally i don't trust the 2024s tell me what you think is it worth buying a 2025 and i'm saying 25 because we're talking about the electric right the inline six the six pack those should be coming out actually towards the end of this year from what they're telling us they're telling us that they should be rushed so the inline six hurricane version should be dropping by the end of this year but the electric joint is not coming until mid next year. I'll take that back. The electric joint shouldn't be coming until mid next year or something of that sort. Um, and that's what we're seeing. Me personally, I'm not willing to take that risk. But if you want to be the first of the first to have a Hellcat engine or a V8 engine in your 2025, this may be appealing to you. But for everybody else, it's not likely. Not likely at all. Not for me. But talk to me, guys. How do you feel about that? At this point... Do you even, do you even like, and let's just be real here. Let me, let me take a couple steps backwards. Like, do you guys even care anymore about the 2025 Charger? Like seeing what you've seen, you've seen the body, you've read the specs and the performance of it. A lot of you guys that watch my channel, you already have 5.7s, 392s, Hellcats, Red Eyes, Demons, Demon 170s. A lot of people may just be calling it a day. Like, you know what? We had our fun. We lived in the golden age of Hemi muscle. The time is over. I've already got my 392. I've already got my Hellcat, my Red Eye, my Demon, my 170. I'm happy. Is that how a lot of people feel out there? Or are you actively looking at upgrading to a 2025? Because I could just be speaking to, speaking to my camera. You know what I mean? And nobody's really listening. Because I haven't heard any hype whatsoever. I don't know one single person that has ordered a 2025 Charger. I don't know anything about it. But talk to your boy, man. You know, talk to your boy. Let me know what you think, man. Like, subscribe, comment. Check out the Motor Trend. It's a pretty interesting documentary. Go ahead and watch the whole thing. If you're a V8 guy or a muscle car guy or a car guy in general, definitely go check it out, man. As always, like, subscribe, comment. It's been your boy, Knockout360. I'll see you in the next one, man. Peace.